We now begin a series of videos in which we explain the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom. Okay, so let's take a look at the hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom is uh, composed by a nucleus where uh, there is a proton. And then in the periphery, there's going to be uh, an electron. Okay, and that's what we're trying to uh, solve the quantum behavior for. So the way that we do this is, is uh, uh, the way we always do this in quantum mechanics. We set up the Schrodinger equation and then attempt to solve it. Okay, so let's see how the Schrodinger equation is going to look like for this particular problem. All right, uh, notice that uh, we're in, uh, interested in solving uh, for the motion of the electron around the nucleus, and that motion is three-dimensional. That means that the kinetic energy term of the Hamiltonian operator is going to have three dimensions. And the way that we write that is as follows. Minus eight squared over eight pi squared mu second derivative with respect to each one of the possible uh, dimensions for motion. Okay, that would be a three-dimensional kinetic energy term. All right, notice that here we have something that is called a reduced mass. Okay, so that would be the reduced mass of the proton-electron uh, pair. Okay, so that would be the mass of the proton times the mass of the electron over uh, the sum of the masses. Okay, but because the mass of the proton is about 1,800 times greater than the mass of the electron, this is essentially the same as the mass of the electron. Okay, you would be able to neglect here the mass of the electron in the denominator, and then uh, be able to cancel those mass of the nucleus or the proton, and then you will get the mass of the electron. Okay, so uh, you, you might see this equation as well uh, with the mass of the electron here, even though for accurate work people use the reduced mass of the entire system. Right, so this is the uh, kinetic energy term of the Hamiltonian operator. Now, we also have to consider the potential energy term in the Hamiltonian operator. And of course, um, uh, a key contribution that you have to that potential energy term is the fact that, well, the electron is negatively charged in the nucleus, okay, in the case of the hydrogen atom, uh, will actually be positively charged. Okay, so there's going to be some sort of attraction, which is electrostatic in that case. And the way that we uh, usually write these electrostatic attractions is through Coulomb's law. Okay, so uh, the potential uh, would be equal to Q1, Q2 over 4 pi E naught R, where uh, this is just the charge of one of the particles, the charge of the other particle, and then the permittivity of a vacuum and the distance between the two particles. Now, in the case of the uh, uh, hydrogen atom, we write a modification of this, okay, which already takes into consideration the fact that these two things attract each other, and the way that we write it is like this. All right, again, these two expressions are exactly identical. Okay, uh, e is simply uh, uh, the atomic charge. Okay, it will be uh, the size of the charge of the electron and the size of the charge of uh, the proton in the nucleus. C is simply the atomic number. Okay, so for the case of uh, hydrogen atom, this will be simply one. And then that's just the distance between uh, uh, the proton and the, and the electron. Now, this expression, okay, we're talking about a hydrogen atom, but it actually works for uh, something that we call hydrogenic atoms. And hydrogenic atoms are atoms that only have one electron. Okay, so for example, the hydrogen atom is, 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 one of, is part of the family, but then you would have that the helium plus atom is also uh, part of the hydrogenic atoms. The helium plus atom only has one electron, but it would have two protons, right? So the only modification to this expression would be that uh, the z is equal to two. The reduced mass would also change, but again, because that's going to be most, uh, it's going to be, uh, uh, you can approximate that as the mass of the electron, this is not going to change much. Okay, uh, there are other hydrogenic, hydrogenic atoms. You can look at uh, lithium two plus, for example. Lithium two plus can also be uh, solved with this expression. The only difference here that would be that, that z would be equal to three. You still have one electron. Okay, so there is the kinetic energy term. This is the potential energy term of the Hamiltonian. So that means that our uh, overall Schrodinger equation is going to be this, minus C, E squared over four pi E naught R. Apply this to the wave function and you will get the energy of that hydrogen atom multiplied by the wave function. Okay, so uh, here comes a problem that complicates this uh, solution a little bit. Notice that in this case, uh, here in the kinetic energy term of the Hamilton operator, 
we have uh, variables, dimensions x, y, and z, coordinates x, y, and z, but in the potential energy term, we have diff the distance between the protons, uh, the proton and the electron, okay, which is uh, a function of x, y, and z, but is provided in a different uh, type of coordinate, which is called a radial coordinate. Okay, so what we actually have here would be four different dimensions, even though this is related to those three. Okay, so uh, to simplify this, we actually change the coordinate system, and instead of using Cartesian coordinates, we're going to use something that is called spherical polar coordinates. Okay, and there's an easy conversion between them, okay, which we can write right here. Suppose that you have here an x-axis, that's the y-axis, and this is the z-axis. Notice that any point in space, for example this one, suppose that the nucleus is right here and this is where the electron is, you can specify the position of the electron okay, by either saying, well, here you have a set of coordinates x, y, and z, okay, and that will be the Cartesian coordinates, but you can also specify that position unequivocally by using something that is called spherical polar coordinates. Okay, so you can say what is the distance between uh, that uh, uh, particle and the center, Okay, uh, and that is what that R is. Okay, and then simply you have to specify two angles. Okay, this is what we call the polar angle theta. Okay, and it would go here this projection right there. This is what we call the azimuth angle phi. Okay, so again, it's equivalent to express the position of this electron around the nucleus using either x, y, z coordinates or using uh, polar coordinates, which we call R, theta, and phi. Okay. It turns out that the solvent is going to get an equation with this uh, set of coordinates in which all of this gets transformed to uh, these three uh, spherical polar coordinates is far simpler. Okay, and that's the way that actually the, uh, the equation is solved. All right, so what will happen then is when we examine the solutions to this we then get equation, the wave function is not going to depend on x, y, z. Instead, the wave function is going to depend on something that we call a radial coordinate, which is, again, how far away from the nucleus you are, and then two angles. Okay, which will be the polar angle and the azimuth angle. Okay? So uh, this is the setup of the Jungler equation, and in the next uh, a few videos, we actually talk about uh, the quantum numbers, the energy uh, solution of the Jungler equation, and then finally we will talk about the wave functions.